Alright guys, so today I am here at the Ashton Tortoise Preserve uh, here in northern Florida and it's just an incredible place. Uh, what I really like that they do is <laughs> there's a radiated tortoise right there. What I really like that they do is they have multiple species of tortoise, especially tortoises like, you know, radiated tortoises. And they create these functional outdoor habitats for them to live, you know, a natural outdoor lifestyle. Uh, they do have covered areas for when it does get cold. It did just get cold here within the last few weeks. Uh, but what's really neat is these tortoises have the ability to wander around in large, spacious enclosures and really live their best life. super cool and I like that they have like you know palmettos and plants and you know the all the all the natural things that you know turtles and tortoises need they also have an area for growing their own greens for the tortoises to eat which I think is super cool anytime you can grow your own food uh, that's just amazing so they have some radiated tortoises over here some mountain tortoises uh, and this enclosure is a marginated tortoise we'll see if we see it it's the hottest part of the day right now so it's really hard to see them but as you can see, these enclosures just, you know, they just go on and on. And uh, it's a really cool place. I'm super thankful they were able to invite me here. So about how many ra radiateds would you say are in here? Um, I have uh, in here right now seven adults and, uh, and then, uh, eight people. Now, how big is the enclosure? Uh, the entire, this entire enclosure here is on about a half acre and they're splitting up into, you know, an eighth of an acre. So these, these all came from different sources? No, same source. Okay. Um, or they were in the same confiscation. Okay. So I don't know, like, with, with um, um, we're thinking they're, they are unrelated though. Mm -hmm. And we're taking from different sources from the wild. Yes, yeah. They left the belly scratch too. Probably, but yeah, they are they are probably I would say the most social tortoise species we have them in the red fish. Really? I mean, they log fest. Oh yeah. What do you have? Three males and so four females? Yep. No, no, four four males and three females. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we work with AZA stud books with the radiated tortoises. So we have two barns and that way we can separate the, the uh, sexes and, and we know the genetics on the tortoises. And, um, you know, with each male, female, um, we'll pair them. And then uh, once they produce uh, a handful of offspring, then we'll separate. But the females can hold sperm for about a year. So hence, you know, the separation and everything else. There's, you know, for the stud books, you have to know the damn sire. Right. Wow. They usually put blue, yeah. blue for boys, classic pink for girls. Yeah, I could put it over here and just go. That's fine. Uh, they sometimes mark them, you know, blue, the blue nail polish for boys. Yeah, yeah. All right, so over here is George, the yellowfoot tortoise, enjoying some food. He's a big guy. It's a good size yellowfoot. Look at that sculpted shell too.
<laughs> he doesn't like that. I think he wants to mate with you. <laughs> is that a male? It is a male, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Keep, see if you can keep him off. Yeah, see, see if I can make him my friend. Okay. <laughs> right, there you go. That's how you make friends. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Straight on to follow you. So yeah, the girlfriend toured us here and um, and yeah, um, it, you know, in the sand hills up here, their burrows go down about 40, 45 feet in depth. I always joke with folks saying if we ever get nuked, I'm shoving myself down a gopher burrow, you know? Yeah. At the date, about around 427 species recorded utilizing the burrow, animals using to elude forest fire, predators, uh, hibernate, raise offspring, hunt. I mean, once you lose that burrow to an ecosystem, every single species within that ecosystem is affected since being a keystone species. And they're arguably, you know, globally, you know, your poster child for keystone species. Um, if it's a moon shape, you know, it's go for tortoise. They kick out a lot of sand, you know, to create that apron. A lot of times they lay the eggs on the apron as well, open canopy. Um, and then uh, they had all sorts of side chambers from, you know, mouse species that go for frogs to this and that living down there. And they always burrow to the water table. Uh, so obviously their burrows in North Florida go down a lot more in depth than South Florida. Came illegal, I believe in Florida, I could, I have to recheck this, but 2008 to chuck gasoline down the burrows to flush out the snakes for the rattlesnake roundups. Georgia became illegal in 2012 in Texas it's still legal to gas the tortoise burrows for the flushing out the snakes for the uh, roundups and uh, you know if one doesn't even care about the natural world then um, you know you should care about us as a species because we're literally throwing gasoline straight into our water source so that's another issue going on with the torts on top of the entombing and everything else so So yeah, here we'll run fire through the field and this is an invasive uh, uh, bahia grass right here. So like, you know, your, your animal species, we planted some long leaf pine through here, but your animal species making it through here um, have a have less of a survival rate than making it, making it through endemic growth. You know, birds of prey, terrestrial predators can spot the juvenile animals moving through pasture grass a lot better than you can your wire grass, which we have growing up there. And then these mounds are pocket gophers? Correct, yeah, these mounds of dirt right here are pocket gophers and uh, they're referred to as ecological engineers they almost look like a guinea pig from a horror yeah. movie or something but they create out underground subway systems um, so these uh, systems you see on the surface are moles and these guys are pocket gophers and I would argue they're a keystone species as well as the gopher tortoise and uh, they say they serve as a safe refuge for animals to move across pasteurized systems from wooded area to wooded area and then they also um, uh, once again, the word ecological engineers are always kicking up sand from underneath the, the, the uh, surface, bringing it to the surface and bringing up nutrients and the wind will disperse the nutrients. And then they're always killing plants by covering them up, but also allowing for new growth to occur as well. So yeah, once again, extremely important for the environment. Uh, keystone species, I would argue, maybe not as much as the gopher tortoise, but still play a big role. <laughs> <laughs> there goes a gopher tortoise down his burrow. Here at Ashton, we just don't always only focus on tortoise species. Well, uh, we also focus on a lot of snake species as well. What I'm holding here is a pine snake, and it's a species that's getting more rare and rare within the state, just like indigo king snake and a whole bunch of others. And uh, we educate a lot of kids on these because they have a lot of myths surrounding them and everything else. And you know, tortoises, uh, most people for the most part, you know, it's a passive reptile. They enjoy the tortoise, but the snake's more of a creepy crawly. And so we take the snakes to the schools, festivals within the community, and talk about conservation, um, how they consume 
rats and rabbits that have ticks and control diseases like Lyme disease. Also uh, controlling, making sure our food hits market, you know, when uh, farmers are growing their produce in the field and stuff. Uh, uh, snakes uh, control a lot of the rodents that would be eating the seed banks or the, or the, uh, the produce itself. So they're responsible for making sure a lot of food hits market as well as keeping food prices down that the farmers aren't putting as much, um, um, you know, financial income into rodent prevention. And also, uh, you know, for venomous snakes, um, they have a lot of medical applications for us as humans as well. So we teach the importance of all snake species for venomous to non-venomous here as well. Do a mandatory pine snake selfie. <laughs> Now these guys are also eating those pocket gophers where we saw the mounds Perfect. in the longleaf habitat. Yeah, yeah. So these guys travel a lot within the pocket gopher systems and consume the pocket gophers. And um, it's, a, it's a good system for them to travel in because once again they elude the birds of prey, terrestrial predators, weather elements. But these guys are known for traveling in the, the underground uh, pocket gopher subway systems. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what your favorite tortoise was you saw in this video. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, peace.